bother, but I'm going to come back. So the immediate thing, while it's on my mind, because you mentioned a lot about, you know, serotonin receptors and, you know, the neurological setup. And um, a couple of years back, I came across information that was geared around, you know, highlighting how much melanin is contained in mushrooms. Cool. cool. Um, and, um, you know, I'm not sure, you know, because, again, melanin is a loaded word at the moment, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know but um, just in relationship to like melatonin, serotonin, mushrooms, is there any knowledge science you know wisdom that you have or can share about the relationship oh, most definitely. Most definitely. so so um our health is based on circadian rhythm and circadian rhythm is the balance of night and day or, or light and the absence of much light which which we know as the day and the evening hours um our body is attuned to the sun rising and setting um we're supposed to greet the sunrise every morning we're supposed to salute the sunset every day as well. And between that hey Ru and set or Ra and set that, it, that occurs every day, it tunes our body. It creates a timing mechanism in our body. Mm -hmm. Now we have two hormones that coincide with these uh, two periods of the day, the circadian rhythm and that's serotonin and melatonin, which are essentially the same molecule minus, you know, a, a couple elements that are different, but they're pretty much the same thing. Um, serotonin is for the day, so that promotes activity. Um, us, what, um, going out from our pie point, from our center to the extremities. So it's about expansion. That's what daytime is about. Nighttime is about contraction, um, where we think about it. We, we, we go from exploring the whole world to just laying on, on the bed on a pillow for eight hours, not going anywhere. But inside, we go everywhere, you know? So the evening molecule is melatonin. Now, melatonin is very interesting because when you are sleeping, uh, when, you're, when you're healthy and you're sleep, getting your rest and you're sleeping correctly, you go through REM sleep and deep sleep. And during these periods, you're dreaming. And another thing you're doing at this time is you're breathing very slow and very deep. People are not sleeping panting and, and breathing all in their lungs is it's long it's like sometimes you might have to walk up to somebody in the room and tap on the show like you alive bro like, you know what i'm saying and that deep breathing what does deep breathing do it expels large amounts of carbon dioxide why is that important when you get rid of carbon dioxide the 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 chemical term would be called decarboxylate your D, like D taking away and then carboxylation. So you're removing carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Now, if you decarboxylate melatonin, do you know what molecule you're left with? DMT. Say no more. <laughs> DMT <laughs> is decarboxylated melatonin. This is why Baba would always say, you know, you fast, uh, fast in the morning. And, you know, as soon as the sun goes to six o'clock, Sun go down. That's just that's when you get it. Cause you want the night. Black out the curtains. He would always talk about take your joint when the sun's setting. When there's darkness. Why? Because you want that influx of melatonin. You want no stimulus of external light. You want to be able to light up your inner tree. You know what I mean? As mm. opposed to the external world that that is you know out now. In regards to melanin. People may have a misnomer that melanin is created by the pineal gland when it's melatonin that's created by the pineal gland. Speak on melanin, that. on the other hand, is a sentient carbon polymer, okay? So a monomer would be one molecule. A polymer would be a chain of molecules, like the difference between a um, nucleotide and a nucleic acid a nucleotide would be ATP, which we use as energy, adenosine triphosphate. A nucleotide, um, a nucleic acid would be a chain of those ATP, GTP, and all of that, which would make DNA eventually. So mm -hmm. the nucleic acid is the polymer, while the nucleotide is the monomer. So the difference between monomers and polymers is that, you know, one represents a unit while the other one represents a chain of things. So with melanin, it's a polymer. It's, it's, it's a chain. It's a, uh, um, a whole uh, 
um, sentient molecular structure and melanin is able to structure things it has a certain type of intelligence it creates energy it does a lot but it's most profound uh attribute um other than of course absorbing every frequency of light is the fact that um it has the ability to not just disassociate water meaning split h2o into its constituent parts but also put those parts back together into water and that's what drives our body. That's how we get all our energy. That's how we're able to just run off fumes because we're 90% water and the water is the property that provides the energy. Melanin just liberates it for us. And in splitting and recombining water, we create hydrogen gas and plasma. And these high energy molecules and states of energy take care of our system and we think it's coming from all this food we eat <laughs> like no it's it's actually the water you know so so to sum it up melanin is a a a uh technology that is supposed to be coupled with water and i was just talking about the whole dried aspect of mushrooms we have to chew those dried mushrooms we have to add water to it in order to make the properties active you know uh, our whole body is aqueous so melanin definitely plays a huge role in the uh, journeys that we take when we have on these trips, because these trips have everything to do with certain uh, neuronal areas of the brain, such as the substantia nigra and the locus ceruleus, which are extremely melanated. These are melanated, neural melanated areas of the brain, you know, so melatonin, um, melanin, DMT, as well as your system. Um, these are keys to unlock doors that allow passage into other dimensions and other realms without you lifting a finger. Yeah, I had a, I come across a post a few weeks ago and it was making reference to the so-called Bushmen of South Africa, the Khoisan, the Sun, and um, they were going into their dance rituals, you know, and um, it was just a snippet. And just the guy, you know, narrating the documentary was basically saying, these guys are getting into psychedelic states without taking psychedelics. They just do it by dancing around the fire, you know, with these particular chants and they right, get right. into these altered states of consciousness and, you know, right. and he goes in, but not forgetting you, you know, your body is the computer is the technology, you know, and um, we have tools and technologies that complement our technology that enable us, like you said, to open up That's right. That's right. Other areas. But you mentioned about this, is it the circadian rhythm cycle? Yes. Yes. I, I'm just because it what came to mind because I thought you said locust but you said something else but about um the circadian bugs you familiar with this is it circadian oh, oh, cicadas. you're talking about the cicadas yeah. yeah where they have the fungus that infects them and yeah. they end up having DMT but that's right that's right yeah, yeah very I'm familiar with them I have an interesting story see this is the thing like you never know what you're going through when you're growing up and you go through experiences you know until sure. later like um on 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 the the series flash which is a, a comic book series they have a villain named cicada um i've been hearing the term cicada a lot lately and i'm like wow when i was younger i thought i was a, like i thought i was the only one that knew about cicadas because i used to live in upstate new york mm. i had a job um in a city called tivoli so <laughs> i would have to ride my bicycle because I was, I was around 13, maybe at this time. I used to have to ride my bicycle because I was a, I was a bus boy. So I worked in this restaurant. This is how I, yeah, I learned how to cook um, certain items too, because I, I worked alongside a chef, you know? So I was kind of a sous chef because he would have me like help him with things, but really mm -hmm. I was like more of a bus boy. I gather all the dishes, you know, clean, make sure all the dishes is clean, clean all the machines and everything like that. So I really learned my way around the kitchen at a very young age. And um, it was a fine dining restaurant too. It wasn't like a diner or, you know, McDonald's, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I would have to ride my bike to work. And my job was, I think it was a 14 miles, something like that. I would have to ride because I have to ride through town, then get on the highway and ride all the way down the highway on the bike and then get off the exit and then go into town and then I'd be there, which was cool. It was a nice ride. I was out in the country. It was beautiful scenery. You know, it was cool. So one day I get up 
And <laughs> I noticed all of these um, brown beetles on the tree trunks. And I see little grubs, little beetles coming up from the ground and they're like climbing up on the tree and just staying there. I didn't think nothing of it. So then uh, sometime later I come back out and they're all just on the trees like this. So I go over and I touch them and they're hollow. They're just these shells of little beetles just clinging to the tree trunks everywhere. Every, every tree trunk all over the place. I'm like, they look like some alien takeover stuff, right? Exactly. So next thing you know, I come out and I swear to you, there were these big giant cicadas about this big, flying, let me get in the camera, <laughs> this big, <laughs> flying all over the place, up in the trees, low, on the ground, on the grass, I'm talking about there was nowhere the cicadas was not. Mm. And you hear them because they make that sound, you know, like like crickets do, but just real, real, uh, they're, they're a little bit more aggressive though. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, I didn't know nothing about cicadas. I'm just looking at the whole process taking, mm. taking place before my eyes. This is a 17 year cycle. I just happened to be there on the 17th oh. year. Lessons. <laughs> so I'm like, so I had, I had somebody I was staying with at the time because my mom wasn't up there and I asked her if she could give me a ride. I was like, can you give me a ride to work? Do you, I'm not about to ride my bike in this crazy jump. And she had somewhere to go and she was like, nah, you're going to have to handle that. So I'm talking about big old giant cicadas landing on me, landing on my face, on my head. I'm riding my bike. They hit me in the face. They hit me all in the chest, all of that. So I had to literally... <laughs> ride through a whole uh cicada um what would you even call it? swarm of cicadas you know yeah, what i mean I, yeah. I was able to witness firsthand the whole 17 year cycle of the great cicadas that occur here in this country and i you know, wow. i didn't know at the time that's what it was but in hindsight now when i learn everything about cicadas i'm mm -hmm. like wow i actually had that experience as a child <laughs> like, like, that's most cool man had it. Yeah, when I was reading about it, I was like, oh, yeah, I would like to have witnessed one of those, man. I was lining up, you know, to, like, it's, it's an event, you know, it's an event in itself. It is, and, it is, like, it is, yeah, it is. and then just based on the cycles and the patterns, it's like, you know, just how, the, again, how nature's technology been works. years, bro, like, to the <laughs> day, and they just come up from the earth like, like, like zombies, bro, like Thriller. Yeah. And they just start climbing up on the trees, and then they just stay there. And then yeah. they crust over and they bust out and then they climb up in the leaf. It's wild. Yeah, man. And then they get infected by the fungus. By the fungus. And on the latest reports that I was reading, they've identified that they're psilocybin containing fungus. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're, oh, they're, so. they're, uh, they're psilocybin yeah. DMT yeah. containing. <laughs> and, and my thing is, the it's not until the fungus, and so it's something that happens between the infection of the cicada. So the cicada plays a host it's almost Asian, like, yeah. um, it's like cheese, I guess you would say. You know what I'm saying? Like if the cow eats a certain thing, produces milk, and then, mm. you know, even bees with honey. So it's it's like this psilocybin is getting produced, or, or even, what's the other mushroom um, that infects the worm? Uh, cordyceps. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right? They end up, the, they, so it's like half shroom and half this big yeah. old swallowtail yeah. caterpillar or something I'm like that. Heads, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, it's similar to that where this fungus infects this organism and the byproduct is a psilocybin, you know, cough drug. Delicacy. Like, <laughs> psilocybin delicacy, ready, you know. That's what I'm saying. That's already why. dried out, you know, it's naturally dried out, you know, and ready to like, oh, damn. I mean. And then another thing it does is it, it, it actually deals with its pot. It's like a population control mechanism too because for some reason, it af it affects males and destroys their sex organs and disorients them. And then you have male cicadas messing with male cicadas. Mm -hmm. I found that was the interesting part of it too. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> what's happening here? But that's going to prevent any, any um, further lineage happening. So now you're, you're literally dealing with cicada because you know i don't i don't prescribe to eat meat and things like that but if you did consume those cicadas you wouldn't be interrupting 
their natural process of, of generations because they can't reproduce no more. Yeah. Because of the infection that took place. It compromises their sexual organs and that whole process. So whoever, whoever didn't get infected, they're able to perpetuate the species, but these, they can't. So they have to serve some type of purpose. I guess. (laughs) I feel sorry for the squirrels or whatever little animals catch them and eat them, bro. Like that gotta be a whole thing. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Well, me and Moody was chopping it up a, a little while back and just looking at, you know, how and when these insects and animals, mammals um, intentionally go to visit these psychedelic, you know, plants and organisms in the way that we do. We know reindeers do, foxes do here oh, in this wow. region, you know, and like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a, a delicacy that mother nature yeah. offers for, for all, you know, and, you know, and it's on some animals' menus and it's not on others. So, yeah, they right. do. They be, yeah, they, and as you said, they're processing it in the same way. They've got their technology and however they, um, you know, they fly like the reindeers do or <laughs> supposedly do, you know, like, <laughs> there's many myths that come off the back of these things, those interactions. Oh, with definitely. Them, like, yeah, Santa ain't nothing but an Amarita. Amanita, I mean, he ain't nothing but an Amanita. You know what I'm oh, saying? Man. With his red and white and all that type of stuff, man. Yeah, so. Oh,